ladies. Sorry, I'm late. I was busy watching an, an auction <laughs> over at a junk journal. <laughs> and um, I got all enthralled and forgot what time it was. <laughs> so um, this isn't going to be real, real long because I'm just going to show you guys pretty much how I made these papers grungy. And I'm going to keep it, like I said, you know, relatively short. That way, if people want to come back and watch the replay, you know, they won't have to search and search through this whole big long winded thing, you know, of how to do it. We'll do it right up front. And then if there's other things you guys, you know, want to know about or have any questions, then we'll we'll do that after we we do the grunge stuff. All righty. So um, those of you that bought. Well, first of all. Um, this paper that we're going to grunge up is the paper that some of you bought when you got the, um, industrial kit. <clears throat> and if you did not get the kit, well, I'm sure you've got plenty of papers that you can do this with also, so you can benefit from it. You don't have to have bought the kit. <clears throat> Hi, ladies. Oh, it's been a long, good day today. The weather was beautiful. I went out in the yard. I chopped back some of my hydrangeas. They've already got blossoms on them. I pulled some weeds. Mr. Bunny came out and he was bouncing around over there in the yard. with me. Well, I wasn't doing the bouncing. He was doing the bouncing. But um, so it was a good, good day. And I got stuff done in the studio. I got all of my orders out, they're gone, and it's barely seven o'clock. <laughs> I feel like I got a lot of stuff done. Anyway, so now I just want to um, dif dif differentiate, um, I'll get the word out, um, between eco printing and just grunging paper. This is not how to eco print. This is just how to make your papers look grungy. Alrighty. Now, um, for the benefit of the ones that did not get the kit, I'll show you how these papers looked before. <laughs> um, let me get some of these out that are there and that are grunged up. Like, um, as a for instance. Like this piece right here was just a piece of craft paper. So you can see, uh, I hope you can see the difference on the, on the monitor. It doesn't show up that much. But anyway, that's an example of gringing that up. Let me find, okay, here's just a, um, a piece of ledger paper. You know how those normally look. And this is how it looks after... You know, he kind of aged it up a little bit. Um, let me see. Now, what you're going to find, these papers here. Let me find one in case you don't recognize it. <laughs> Which one that is. That is this one. Now, what's really cool about this one is now I had never done work with this paper except for um, coffee dyeing or tea dyeing, one or the other. But when I did this um, this other effect, um, all of this red that you see and uh, look what it did. It did all these blotchy, cool things. I mean, I like it. Look how blotchy this all got. And a few of it, uh, a few of the pieces of a. Uh, other papers also got a little bit of the red. I don't know where that is right now, but it kind of bled through into other stuff. I did two of those. Look how cool that came out. So that's kind of giving you an idea of how different uh, your papers can look. Here's another one of those uh, craft papers. Um, this is, now see, this doesn't have the red on it. That is this one, but because I had these laying kind of close together, some of that red 
uh, transfer it over to there. So that's pretty cool too. Um, I didn't, I don't think I did. I did not put in the, uh, um, the blueprint, but that was just a personal choice. I like the way it looks. I didn't want, you know, I really didn't want to change it any, but you know, you might want to, or you might want to cut it in half and grunge one half and, you know, leave the other. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> And, you know, with these start off looking just like, you know, like manila folders. And that came out pretty cool. I'm not reading yet because, you know me, I can't have, do more than one thing at a time. Once I show you these, I'll look up and see if you have any specific questions before we go on. Um, these are the uh, printouts that uh, they started off like this. And this is how they turned out. I threw in just a piece of fabric that I had. <clears throat> this was a sample to a uh, uh, to a curtain, so I threw that in there. That piece of uh, canvas that's in there, I threw that in there also. Here's another piece. How that came out. Um, and then I just got some other stuff that I had to see how it would all, you know, um, grunge up. I threw in, um, some little pieces of trim and some fabric and a little piece of doily. And obviously I love how that all came out. That was super cool. Oh, and these are those little shorter, small ones. And what else? And then the large envelope. Super cool. See that red just kind of went all over the place. I think everything that was underneath, um, I think everything that was right on top of and underneath this got a little bit of that red in there, which I just think it's super cool. If you don't like it, you might want to do these these red. You'll still get the red, but the red won't go on everything else. But I like it on everything, so that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. And there's just another file folder. Some more of the little tags. And these were those um, paste stubs. They grunged up pretty good, too. And I threw in those pages that are in the kit, and they um, they all came out pretty cool. And so that's what um, this was made out of. It was made from one of the file folders that I put inside of uh, that batch. And then all of these papers in here, You'll recognize them. Those were all of these. What I did is when I bought did the boil, I did I did two batches. I think I did two batches of stuff so that I'd have um, the stuff to put in this journal and then to work with when we work together. So if now, you know, everybody's, you know, maybe perception of what they want to do with their kit, you know, is going to vary. But if you want it to be like super grungy like this. Um, that's what I'm going to show you tonight, um, how I did these papers. And that way, if that's your choice to do it like that, then, you know, you're all ready to go. So, <clears throat> so anyway, now it's so simple, it's ridiculous. <laughs> First of all, what I do, um, I put them in a pan laying flat. I don't fold anything. It just, to me, it makes it simpler. Um, you don't have to worry about things tearing when you're trying to unfold things. I just lay things on top of each other. There's no specific pattern as to how or why I do it. But now knowing what this does, I'll be careful if I want it to bleed or if I don't want it to bleed where I position it in the pile. That's about the only thing that I would, um, you know, um, 
think about, you know, the next time I did it, if I wanted the red or not. But other than that, I would just throw everything in any way you want. When I did, um, when I did these, I just threw those in the mix. But when, <clears throat> but when I did these, I just kind of rolled them up, kind of wrapped around each other and wrapped it all up and in this corner, just, oops, and I had the twine around it and then just threw it off into a corner of the pot. That's pretty much how I did that. Okay. Okay, now let me see any questions so far. Um, <laughs> did I say crap paper? <laughs> I may have. <laughs> Well, it was crap paper when I was done with it, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so I have a designated um, pan that I use for uh, all of my eco printing. So I use that when I do my grunge papers too. Now it's going to look pretty nasty because it is nasty looking. The nastier it is, the better. Um, let me get this out of the way. I'll give you the dimensions, but, you know, as long as your papers fit and even if, you know, your paper, if you don't have something big enough and you need to fold them, that's fine, too. Um, I'm just lazy, you know, so I, I choose not to fold them, but it's all up to you guys. OK, so the inside of this is about 17 by 11 and a half, um, like I said. As long, as long as you're happy folding, it can be any size. But I find that pretty much any paper that I choose to do, um, this is a really good fit. And I just got this at a junk shop. So, you know, because you're going to turn it into junk anyway if you get through with it. And this is um, a little under two and a half inches deep. And this thingamajigger. I just got this at the uh, Dollar Tree, and this is what um, makes that really cool design um, on those other folders. When I eco print, let me get you an example of what I'm talking about. When I do these, um, what I basically do is I um, I put all the papers in here when I do my eco printing, and then I tie it up with twine, and then I have another one of these, and I sit it on top and put some weight on it, so all these little lines and grooves are on here, and I think that really it makes it kind of cool looking. So. Um, if you decide to get some of these, like I say, they're just a dollar. You know, I have oodles of them because I use them when I do my printing. So if you're going to do a lot of grunging <laughs> or take my eco printing class, <laughs> hint. anyway, uh, <laughs> then you have your tools to play with. So that's something to think about as far as getting those. All right. Next. Um, um, I guess that's, that's it as far as your pan. Um, I do mine over the stove. Um, you know, I, I do have a studio. So when it comes to my eco printing, it doesn't bother me, you know, to, you know, um, I, ha I have the windows open, I have exhaust fan. I would not, if you decide to do any kind of eco printing, I would not suggest that you do it inside of your kitchen. Um, because you don't have any idea, you know, if, you know, if the plants that you're going to be, you know, playing around with let off, uh, fumes that, you know, can make you sick. And even if they don't make you sick, you know, um, you might have allergies and remember that your pets are much more sensitive to the poisons and the toxins in these plants, if they do emit some, then you are. You may feel fine, but you may make your your dog or cat, or especially birds, if you have birds in your home, um, please do not do this in the house, the eco printing. What we're gonna do today 
you can do. But the eco printing, please do not do around your pets. Anyway, having said that, um, I do this on top of the stove. Um, some people choose to do it in their ovens if they have a, a designated um, oven for crafts and stuff. Um, but I do everything on, on top of the stove because I like to watch what's going on. So um, that's just me. Um, okay, so this again is very simple. Let me show you the types of stuff that I put in the water. It's a little bit of everything. <laughs> okay, I have in the past made a lot of different um, sprays. Um, I've got a bunch of different sprays that I've made. And I have some browns and I have some blacks. And, um, oh, that's black too. I have this really, really dark red that is pretty cool. And I made these, I'm not exaggerating, probably three years ago. I still haven't used them all. And, you know, they're around. Um, lots of you might have your um, distress sprays, the stains. Um, you might have various colors that are in, you know, earth tone colors or even wild honey and the antique linen, you know, whatever it is, uh, colors that you might have. I, I'm not a big advocate, you know, to go out and go buy stuff, you know, look and see what you got. Y usually you've got stuff. Um, what I like using a lot too in uh, small quantities are these three colors I find really beneficial when it comes to grunging up papers and fabrics and things like that. I like the black, the dark brown, and the charcoal gray. And I really like when you mix equal parts. You need very, very little when you're dealing with grunging up your papers. Um, but I really, really like these three colors a lot. Um, you can, um, in addition to all these, I also throw in a couple of tea bags, um, you know, whatever the cheapest dark tea bags you've got, dark tea that you have, I throw that in there. Um, if I have some, I will um, throw in um, Thai tea because it gives a nice, if you want a lighter look, I didn't do it in this batch because I wanted a darker look. But if you wanted a lighter kind of grungy look, um, Thai tea gives a nice, nice tone to, um, let me, I think I have some here, um, a nice tone to your water. Uh, oh, well, this isn't going to help. <laughs> I have some, but I took it out of the, the bag. And I just have it here in a regular bag. But um, uh, you can't tell. It gives a really, well, yeah, hold on. I can show you exactly. I don't know if it has to be warm. It may not work here. No, but you can see, oh, there it is. See how it's like a an amber kind of color? And so you can imagine when you get a nice, like a half a cup of this stuff, in rolling boiling water um, is going to give a beautiful tone. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out your little arsenal for grunging stuff up. Um, let's see. So between all of these, you know, you can make your own little recipe of um, grunging stuff up. So then what I basically do is I have, you know, this thing here of water. And then I just get like mad scientists. I start a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Maybe the, I don't have a real, real recipe. I'm just showing you all the stuff that I use. And then I just throw it all in and I kind of look at it and go, hmm. And then what you can do is once you've got all this mixture in there, you can get just a regular piece of paper, stick it in and kind of test it and go, hmm, I want it darker or, oh, it's got too much orange, too much yellow, it's got too much black, whatever. And then you just, you know, add a few more things until you kind of get the color you kind of like. All right. So that's what you do. 
as far as mixing your cut. We'll we'll mix it in a set in a second. I'm just going to try and give you a brief overview before we actually do it. Okay, so that's selecting of your colors and all of that. So then, um, then what I do? Uh oh, where's all my papers? Oh, I didn't take them out. Okay. Let's just let's just throw a bunch of stuff down here. Let's just get a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Everything that was in the pack. But I don't mind messing up the grunge. Let's see. I don't, like I said, I don't want to do my, um, I don't want to do my, um, my blueprint. I want to leave that the way it is. That's this. Oh, the fabric. I even forgot what was in the kit already. Oh, all of the, the print out the cards. I guess. Let me see what else is in here. Just throw that in. And uh, no, I don't want those in there. These old things. Woohoo! I don't mind if I say so. This is a pretty fun kit. You'll be able to make more than one one journal, let me tell you. <laughs> Especially if you throw in some of your own papers that you have. I'm sure you got some stuff you want to use. All right, so let's put this big one on the bottom. And keep in mind, as I mentioned, if you just got here, that this one is going to have some red runoff. And whatever you have close to it is also going to have red runoff. Just, just keep that in mind. And I also put that in there because if you recall, even though, you know, this is plastic and it's sensitive, um, where did it go? It is going to be pretty crunchy, but that's what we're doing. We're doing the grunge here. So that's what it's going to do. It's going to, you know, shrivel up because in case I didn't mention, we're going to boil this stuff. <laughs> uh, whoops. Hello. Okay. So, um, anyway, so that's that. So then once Once I get all this mixture mixed up, um, then little by little, I'm going to pour it on top of each page just a little bit to make sure it gets a little bit of it. Not a lot. It doesn't have to saturate the whole thing, but a little bit of it. And then pour the rest of it in. And then I have another one of these that I'll place on the top. And then I'm going to put it on the stove until the water um, comes to a boil and then I'm going to lower it to a simmer and I'm going to leave it there for about 10 minutes to simmer so that all of everything gets really absorbed and um, between the colors that we're using and the, um, the change that the boiling does to the fibers in the paper is what I think really gives it the the feel, the look, everything um, that you can't get if you just dunk it and let it dry or spray it and let it dry. You know, actually boiling um, just, it's what does it, seriously. And even if it isn't, I believe it is. <laughs> and this is all about me right now. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So, uh, <laughs> So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make up our little concoction. I hope I don't make a mess here on my table with my computer and all that kind of good stuff. But just to kind of give you an idea. And then I'll just show you kind of briefly how I put it on the paper. But I'm going to run over and let you guys talk behind my back and take it over to the stove. Because um, I don't want to get, um, you know, everything total mess around here. So I'm not sure what I'm going to put. But we're going to see. We're going to see what happens. Let me shake this up a little bit.
Uh, let me let me check one second. My doggies are all working, and I want to make sure there's not an issue. <laughs> oh my goodness! There's a stray cat in the alley that loves to tease my dogs, and he's back there. That poor that poor cat. If my dogs ever got loose, okay. So I'm putting right now a little bit of this brown, which if you have distressed inks of any kind or any kind of brown anything, woohoo. So, ooh, the see it already looks yummy. It already looks yummy. I got this little black stuff here. <gasps> Whoa. Okay, where's something I can stir with? Where's my little? Here we go. Okay, now I think I want to put some of the charcoal gray in there. And if you buy these and you use these for this kind of a project, always make sure you shake it because all the the pigments go down to the bottom. And use this very sparingly because you know. It's meant to fill up gallons, right? So just a little bit. And then maybe a little bit of brown. <laughs> maybe a little bit of brown. Ooh, walnut stain. You gotta have a little bit of a little bit of Timmy's walnut. Oops. And who knows? So let's dunk something in there and see. See if it's even close to any color that we're interested in. Okay, so this is a little too much on the brown side for my taste for tonight. I mean, light brown. So let's put a little bit more brown. And let's really grunge it up. Maybe I'll put a little bit of black. Oops. Well. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, see, that's a little bit better. It's getting a little grungier. I like that brown. See? Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that mix. You guys may want it darker. You may want it lighter, but I'm kind of happy with that right now. So let me put this stuff in here before I make a total mess. Okay, then maybe because I know I'm going to spill and make a mess. Let me see if I have, maybe I don't. Well, 
this isn't going to work, but it'll give you an idea. I'm afraid if I try to pour that in there, you know how things drip all over the side and everything. And I'll just have too much of a mess here that I really don't want to deal with. But um, let me get this out of the way. And make sure you wear stuff that you don't mind getting all dirty and messy and everything in. So I just make sure that a little bit is on everything. Because when it starts to boil and everything, it's going to get into all the nooks and crannies. So you don't really have to, like, really make sure about early anything. This is a very easy thing in that it, you don't have to be precise about nothing. Now, normally I would just pour it out of the uh, out of the jar on here, but like I say, I think I probably dribble and really make a mess. Now, these are already closed. You can open these or leave them closed. Now, if you if you leave them closed, what happens is that when it boils, it kind of goes into the crevices, and it looks pretty cool. So I'll just go ahead and leave it the way it is. And those of you that have never, you know, done any kind of eco dyeing or anything like that, you're probably thinking, oh, my goodness, it's going to be, it's going to tear, it's going to do this. You'd be surprised how resilient paper is when it's wet, if you're delicate <laughs> with it. You know, you just can't be all rough with it, you know. Um But it's it's very resilient. Now, when you have a big piece like this, it's kind of cool to lay your smaller pieces on top of it because then it gives an imprint. You know, the colors will go like around it and it'll give it that extra aged look. Now, after I've done all this, then whatever is left in the jar, I'm going to throw everything in. And if all of the uh, paper isn't covered, I'll add a little bit more water just to make sure that all the papers are, um, are saturated. This is just to give everything a little bit of a head start. Now, these are just um, done on a inkjet, so they're going to bleed, but that's what I like about them, you know. Oh, and I forgot, if you end up using the 
you know, the Ritz die. Make sure if you're going to be touching anything ah! that you uh, wear gloves and stuff. Unless you don't mind <laughs> trying to get all that stuff off your hands. Okay, now I know that in other projects that this ink bleeds. So um, I'm going to put the fabric over it and see if it bleeds onto the fabric. That might be kind of cool. And you can see that this fabric has been sized at some point because look how it's just beating up. But once it gets boiling, it um, as you saw from the other piece, it just gets um, all sucked in there. Oops, I should have put this on the bottom. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, well. Because I would have wanted some of that if it was going to bleed to bleed on um, another paper. I'll just get some other paper and put it on top. Just because I can. Let me see what I got here. I think what I'll put... Oh, I forgot to put my little motor thing in there. Hello. I added that for you guys afterwards. Let me get some of that in there. And maybe another file folder. You can never have enough grungy file folders. Okay, so what I'm going to do when I get to the stove, I'm just going to get the rest of this, pour it on here, make sure it covers this top one. If it doesn't, I'll add a little, just a little bit more water, and then I'm going to put another one of those great things on top of there, and then I'm going to bring it to a boil, and then lower it and leave it in there um, simmering um, for about, mm, we'll see. Maybe five, ten minutes. We'll do it together. And I will be right back.
Okay, so I poured that whole thing in there and I had to add a, a whole other, um, whoops, better get that out of here. I had to fill up uh, the container with some water, a full container plus half of the container more. But I didn't add any more uh, color or dye to it and any more inks or anything. It had enough. So, whoops, red. So I'll keep an eye on that to see when it gets to a boil. It takes a few minutes. So in the meanwhile, I will show you something else you can do that was kind of fun now i happen to have a book that what oh i forgot to put that in there hold on i want all my goodies in there Now, one day I was at the Dollar Tree. This was several months ago, obviously. <laughs> I haven't been out much lately. Um, and I happened to run across a book that was about the color of a manila folder. Didn't have anything in the front, didn't have anything in the back, and only had that um, on the side. You can see there the original color. Now, all I did was I got some twine and I wrapped it up and um, tied it, you know, wrapped it this way, then tied it like this and threw it into a similar boil that I just got through explaining to you. And this is what happened to it. And I love how it came out. Now, you may not be fortunate enough to find a book, you know, in that color, but you could get any book that you you know, want to use, and you could get just copy paper, cover, recover the whole thing in copy paper, and then do the exact same thing. After it's dried and everything, tie it up, throw it into a similar dye bath like that, boil it for a few minutes, and this is what you'll get. And then you can either use some of these pages, you can tear all the pages out, um, you can turn it into a really clue, uh, a glue book. If you, you know, put some of these pages and glue them together, um, any kind of journal you would want to do, you know, you just do the appropriate thing with these pages and stuff and you've got it, but it's a super cool look with very, very little effort. So I just wanted to share that with you, you know, cause you get kind of depending on the. You can see how I use different colors. This one had a lot more um, browns in this one, brown and black. And this one I stayed more on the, uh, a lot lighter. I used mostly tea and stuff like that, that particular boil. Let me go make sure if the boil has started. It's starting to bubble a little bit. It's starting. So, um, so that's another avenue that you can do with a book. And I thought that was a pretty cool idea. All right. Well, let me read. This is the first time I've been able to read now. <laughs> um... Yeah, Karen answered, I mean, um, Aaron answered 
Whose question was that? Kim's. There you go. Thank you, Aaron. I do not use any um, writ dye or anything like that when I eco print. Everything I use when I eco print is 100% um, natural. Whether I'm using plants or fruits or vegetables, um, all of my dyes come um, from natural sources as opposed to what I just showed you. That's why I wanted to make sure I didn't, you know, conflate the two that what we were doing here was just, you know, another version of eco dyeing because I don't use anything fake when I eco dye. <laughs> Any other questions? I think you guys were showing up. There's a lot of other lives going on right now and sales and stuff. So I appreciate you guys coming in. You could have always watched the repeat, but I thank you for supporting me. Um, what else did I want to? <sighs> I didn't have like, you know, something planned for the interlude. <laughs> I should have. I should have. What else is going on? Let me see what else do I have to show you. Um, I'm looking, I'm, I'm letting my eyes glance over everything. I'm working on, um, on some of some encaustic covers. I've had the covers for a while, but now I'm working on the journals. I have fun working with those. Um, And that's what I've been doing most of most of the day. So I don't really have anything else like that to show you. I'll show you what those look like right now. Hold on one second. Hey, Anne. <laughs> Laura, that's true, right? But there's a lot of cool stuff sometimes, and we can't spend money anywhere else. So, oh, I know what I can show you. Oh, I forgot. See, my mind, I forget I was working on this. Now, before I show you this, there's other ladies that are familiar with my journals that I make like this, and they know I've been working on a, <laughs> I think since last year, I've been working on a workshop, and then things crashed, my computer crashed, I lost some of the video, I got discouraged, so um, I'm going to have to probably start it all over, I think I'm going to have to start it all over again, but um, this is one of my plaster journals that um, I've been working on the past few days, and I think it's, okay, eco printing is my absolute favorite thing to do. But when it comes to journals, it's kind of a toss up between my plaster journals and my encaustic journals, as far as being my favorites to um, to make. Um, I don't know which I like better. But um, anyway, um, I I did the um, I did the actual cover probably about a month ago. And then I just walked away and I didn't decorate it. And then I was going through my stuff for something totally different and ran across this, um, this glove. And so then I did my thing with the glove and I attached it to the cover. And then I looked at it and I looked and I go, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? So I just went over and I started cleaning up stuff. And I was separating some of my Asian stuff and I came across this picture and I just thought, oh, she would look really cool on the cover. And then, you know, how yeah, you know things happen when you start doing things, you get inspired and then it just kind of snowballs from there. And so that's pretty much how this came about. And um, and then I put a little bit of napkin in the back and then some more of that fabric and some stamping. 
And so that kind of sort of became the cover. Um, this was some fabric that I had. And um, yeah. Whoops. I got to go check the. I'm getting distracted. I got to go check the boil. See if it's boiling yet. Okay, so we'll let that boil for a little bit, for at least five to ten minutes. And so anyway, so that is the cover. I'll just give you a teaser of what my um, my plaster journals look like. Those of you that are new to um, plaster journals or, you know, haven't seen my particular ones. And then maybe you'll be tempted when I finally post the the course. <laughs> uh oh, there's Tamar. Oh my goodness. She's the one that's been like the number one on the list that wants that workshop up. <laughs> so um well obviously the front the the cut the whole cover is a plaster journal. And then I also plaster um fabric that makes the journals really, really special when you um, go to, you know, decorate your pages. They just, I don't know. It's just, I just love these journals. I love playing in them. I like making them. I don't know how much you can see because everything's white right now, but um, I use, um, I use doilies. I use canvas. I use clothes. I use lace, um, whatever. <laughs> oh, Jennifer's got a couple of mine too. Tamar and Jennifer, I think, as far as in in the chat right now, I think they're the ones um, that have some of my plaster journals. They're great support system for those um, journals. It's not, you know, I don't think it's for everybody, but it's definitely for them. <laughs> they like him and so do I. They're time consuming to make. And then, I mean, to make the pages and then to actually make them. Um, it just, it just takes time. But I love doing it. I just, they're one of my favorite journals to make. Um, are all the little fabric journals done? Are you talking about the birdie ones that I did with the um, quilts and all that kind of stuff? Is that what you're referring to? Because I have a bunch of that that I'm still working on. If that's what you're asking about, I still have some more of those to make. And then I got those um, little packs from um, from Brooke that has the birds from Maine. And I want to make some with all those birds from Maine. And they'll be the same. And I'll have them on some kind of fabric or... Um, you know, old quilts or something. And what did I do with those? I just got those the other day, too. I don't know if you guys saw those. Those are going to be very cute. I think they're going to be cute. Now, not all of them, whoops, no. not all of them, of course, you know, can have all the birds because just the way the fabric got cut, I'm going to contact her and see if I can get, because I didn't get any birds with this one. All I got was like chopped off heads. So <laughs> I'm going to see if I can get, 
<laughs> some birds. But I think these will look cute. So I'm going to make some with these. And these are all um, birds from Maine and plants, I guess, that are indigenous to Maine. So I think they'll look, I think these will look kind of cute. And the hummingbirds. How cute. Is anybody counting? Has it been five minutes? <laughs> I forgot to time it. I think these will look cute. See, I got I got four of each fabric. So I'm not sure. Oh, maybe. Well, some of them do have all different kinds. I mean. To each have a bird, but just that one particular one, I didn't get any birds on them. So I'll contact her and I'll get some. These are pretty too. And because I love the hummingbird, I got, I forget what I got, a half yard or something to this one. Whoa, camera doesn't like it. Hello. Okay. All right. I think, I think they've been boiling five minutes. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure. Don't want my plaster journal. I'm getting all plastered. Okay, so that's just um, about five minutes. You can leave it as long as you want, actually, because when I do my eco printing, I boil my stuff for an hour. So as far as the paper holding up, you can leave it a lot longer um, than, than what we just did. <clears throat> but because all we're doing is trying to get, you know, the color absorbed into um, the paper. It doesn't have to be as long as when you're eco printing. Whoa, that one got kind of dark. That was the last minute one. <laughs> now, I'm not going to take them all out because, you know, it's going to be like a total mess. But I wanted to give you kind of a, an overview of how these come out. Now, see, remember how my other one was all blotchy inside like like this one is, how cool that looks. Okay. 
Ooh, what was this one? Oh, yeah, that was the other paper. Oh, that came out cool. Now, this one didn't absorb as much as the other one did. How strange. But you saw how that was speed. Oh, but see, it did do what I thought it would do. It transferred some of those colors from the check. Look how cool is that. Very cool. Oh, I'm going to make a mess, but it's okay. It's my desk. So are you guys brave enough? If you haven't done this before, are you now brave enough to do it? Oh, that guy kind of sort of disappeared, but it's still kind of cool looking. So you just never know what's going to happen. But either way, you know, if you're looking for some kind of grunge, that's what you're going to get. See, look how cool those transferred right over onto that. Look. <laughs> Oh, yummy, yummy. How cool is that? And remember, you guys have all of this in your kit. It is delicate when it's wet, but um, I'm so used to working with boiled paper anymore. It just, you know, you just got to be careful. I mean, just use some, some judgment. And every paper is different. Oh, now look how cool that is. <laughs> and look, because I did it on top of those prints. And then when you pick these up, if you put them in a different order somewhere, the ink is still going to keep transferring because it's wet. So if you had like a white piece of paper, you know, you could sit these on top of a white piece of paper and they'd continue to bleed off as long as they're wet. Oh, this one didn't get as crunchy as mine did. Maybe I boiled mine longer, but still look how cool that is. It's still very cool. And I'm used to, again, working with the hot stuff. This is hot, so be careful. But I'm just so used to working with this that it doesn't bother me. I don't have fingertips. <laughs> what the heck was this? Oh, that was those light bulbs. <laughs> that one came out pretty cool. I love those eyeballs. Pre-COVID. I had printed those out 
even before all this happened in that weird. Okay, this just that piece of craft paper. That came out pretty cool. Well, I'm very happy with this bunch. Especially when you're doing lives, you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> It could have been like a total disaster. Like, that's what you want us to do? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oops. See, some of this, um, this ink here came off on there. And it must have been on the back of this, some red or something. Somewhere. Oh, no, it's still off that other one. It went all the way through three different pieces of paper. Cool. Okay. Now, this red didn't bleed this time. You know, I think when I did my last one that I showed you, I probably boiled it a little bit longer. So, you know, it, it's just up to you. How much of, you know, of a grunge do you want? See, the red didn't come out this time. Isn't that strange? I guess if you want the red, you got to let it boil a little bit longer. Good to know. So if you want the red, boil. If you don't want the red, don't boil as long. Now here's those papers that were from the book, pages I should say from the book. Let's see if I can get them to open. See how you get that cool dark down the, the crease? That looks pretty cool. So tomorrow, I have one of those, um, those fold up um, flimsy wooden clothes rack thingamajiggers, you know, and you can like put your socks on and stuff like that. And so that's what I hang all of my papers on and put them outside. So I'll hang that these on that tonight. And what doesn't dry overnight, then I'll just put outside. And it will be all set to go when we put this together next week. Pretty cool. That was that yellowish graft paper. Here's that back. Now, this was a really old typed letter, and I'm really kind of surprised that didn't bleed. That was really permanent ink back then. And you notice how I'm getting a lot of blue, and you saw I didn't put any blue in there, but that must be from the black. And then because I laid it on this, it's got those cool lines back there. So I'm going to take this grate off and let these papers back here absorb some of this moisture. 
and get some cool effects from those. And put the rest of this in here. And that is that, ladies. I hope you're not um, disappointed. I hope it, you learned a little something if you haven't done this before. And how you can create very in a very short period of time, you know, a look that looks like it's taken years for it to get like that. And, you know, you really can make them take any tone that you want. You know, we, I obviously was going for the really, really grungy, but if you wanted something softer, you know, you can use uh, the different teas. You can use um, only light browns if you're using some of your stains or if you're using um, some of the dyes, um, you know, stick to the lighter ones and really dilute them, like get the brown, but dilute it a lot, a lot. And then you'll just have that, that softness over it. But like I say, it's super, super fast. If you were to take all these individually and try to do them, you'd be there all day long. And we did this in, you know, five minutes. So very fast, very effective. I like it. <laughs> so any other questions or any questions? Hi, Stephanie. Are you new here? I don't want to be rude. She's probably like been here already and I'm going just noticing, right? <laughs> hey, Tanya. I'm just seeing people. I'm not trying to be rude and only talking to certain people. You know me. I don't look up. I just get Zoom in the zone here and I don't see anybody. And now that I have that, um, that um, what do you call it, that, that ability now to, to see people's channels and stuff, everybody is lit up. So it's like, you're all zooming past me, all lit up. I'm going, what? Yeah, that is. Yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> You're in the in crowd if I saw somebody. <laughs> okay, the little quilted journals you, wait, it's going, the little quilted journals you had, but we couldn't. Oh, do you know, Renee, Renee, I'm very, very shocked. They sold like in about, oh, a couple of hours. They were gone. I was shocked. I go, wow, people. See, I thought they were adorable. But I guess I second guess myself and I think, well, they're just cute to me. You know, people are going to think they're kind of childish looking, you know, because the birdies were kind of, you know, I don't know, like a cutesy, you know. <laughs> but little did I know, everybody likes cutesy. Hey. Was the compute was the computer paper at the bottom of the original boil? Was the computer computer paper? What computer paper? Let me see. I'm getting confused already. You can tell. You can tell in that that little lull right there. Like, uh, what? 
You got to gotta be patient with these people. I'm, I've been a little slow lately. <laughs> I've been doing like five or six different projects at one time. And I actually confuse myself. Like, well, now where does this go? Computer paper. Okay, I guess I don't know what computer paper is. I mean, maybe, maybe that's what's throwing me. What paper? Yeah. That white piece of paper on the bottom of the pan. Say what? Oh, oh, I just I just lost everything. Are you talking about this? You mean the white thing on the bottom down here? No, that was just to catch up um, paper. I mean, the, the drippings. <laughs> that was not in the original boil. I just put it on the pan so that when I put all these papers on there, I don't like to waste nothing, even the drips. It, it'll make a really cool paper. So, no, that was not in the boil. Let me pick up all my stuff I just dropped. Because knowing me, I'll forget they're there and I'll step on them. And that's what I'm making my journal next week. <laughs> I don't want to step on all my journal stuff for next week. Okay. There we go. Let me get this out of here before it decides to dribble all over me or something. You know what I mean? I'll put the dried ones for you to look at. Let me look back again. Rosemary, are you making any more industrial kits? Um, I have, okay, let me put it this way. I don't have everything. It would not be identical. I have most of the stuff. Let me see, what don't I have? Maybe I'm lying. Maybe I do have everything. I got that, I got that. I've got those books. I've got Manoma folders. I've got ledger paper. I think, okay, of all the paper stuff, I have everything. What I don't have, what I don't have everything of are the little, the little doodads. I have doodads. But it won't be the same doodads. Oh, no. I'm like, mm, no, I do have, I still have some of those. Okay, well, wait, wait, wait. Maybe I do have everything. Let me look. You know, I may have everything. I just stopped making them because I, you know, I just, you know, put a arbitrary number of how many to make and that's what I made. But no, I guess if there's people that um, would want some, uh, I think I have all the stuff for it, actually. Hmm, what do you know? Yeah, I do have everything. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Sandra, Sandra who? Why is Sandra speechless? Where's Sandra? Sandra?
<laughs> yeah, I don't waste dribbles. Trust me. They're the best part. They're the best part of all these things, whatever I'm doing. Even when I do my eco printing, um, I don't throw away my leaves. I use them a couple of times. So there is no waste at all. Oh, and I did a few more. I'll just, just, just to tease you guys, I made some more of the um, sanitize. If you guys are in the group, I um, showed a couple of those that I made. They're over there running. <laughs> Because I like to, you know, make a journal uh, for the kit before I, I put the kit up. So you have an idea of what we're going to do with it to see if it even interests you, you know. Like the other one I showed you made from that. So I haven't ironed these yet. But these are some of the... Uh, some of the prints that I've been playing with it. And I've been doing some of this stuff too at the same time. So I'm kind of working on three different, three different things at one time. Cause I get bored really quick. I have to jump around or else I lose, lose interest. And then if I jump around then I stay interested, Oh, I got to go back and do that now. Oh, I got to go back and play with that one now. So it keeps me interested. Aren't these cute? And I don't have many flowers out right now. So some of these are just weeds. <laughs> some of them are just weeds, but who cares? This is an old one I had that I was doing different techniques on it. It's been kind of chopped up. Oh, yep, yeah, this is a different, whole other technique I was playing around with. I do play around now. And here I put a negative on there, but I couldn't make out... I still can't make out what it is because it was real small, you know. And this one didn't come out good. It came out with too many shadows, but it's still kind of cool. I like it. So that's some of the stuff I've been playing around with. Fun, fun. All right, I'll look up again. <laughs> yeah, this is cyanotype. You can do this with the sun or, or um, with uh, ultraviolet, ultra, you know what I mean, the bulb. The bulb. <laughs> No, Popo has not sent the leaves yet. She was waiting for a um um like a postage um scale because they're gonna um do the postage from home. So she was waiting for that. Oh, she just answered. Never mind. <laughs> And Alyssa, I think you need my address because I think there's too many things going to Popo that probably should be going to me. I'm just, you know, putting it out there. <laughs> I've been hearing all the yummy stuff. <laughs> 
I'm just being bad. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, Brenda, somebody was saying that you were looking for a, um, for a kit. I can make uh, another one up. I have all the stuff. I just decided to cut it off at a certain number just because I was lazy and I started moving on. <laughs> yeah, this one that that we're playing around with tonight, I can put one of those together for you if if you want. And you probably should get it before we start it next next Wednesday. People have been getting them like in two days. So it's weird because some people's mail is taking forever. And other people's mail is like almost everything I've sent out. They're, they're getting it like in two days. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. So, any other questions? Because I really didn't have anything else planned for tonight. Unless you guys have a question, I can always answer it. I'm looking around. I don't see nothing. I think I finished my funky fish. All I have to do is put the cover on now. And once I put the cover in, then I'll do a flip of it completely done. Um, what else? I'm working on my encaustic little Asian covers. I'll show you those real quick. They're not done, but the cover is. Well, and the cover's not done either, but <laughs> the encaustic part is done. Let's put it that way. Um, I'm going to have them on a board this size, and it's going to be covered either with um, paper or fabric, but it's all going to be Asian-inspired, whatever it is I end up doing. I haven't decided yet, so that's going to be the size. And then these are the encaustic covers that are going to go on the cover, and they're going to flip. Oops, that's upside down, isn't it? And then on the cover, they're going to flip open. So. And the inside uh, pages will all be, um, you know, Asian inspired too. So these are the, some of them are print out, some are, I don't remember. All, I did, did, you know, different collages in the back. And then they've all got a layer of, uh, several layers of encaustic. And then I've gone around and done some engraving around the pictures and then come back with some oil sticks to fill in. And then on some of them, I did some stamping. Um, and then I came back with the oil sticks to fill in the indentation so you could see where the stamping was done. This one's got some of the engraving. So does this. So another thing I really enjoy doing, I guess, you know, obviously if I do stuff, I enjoy it. <laughs> It would be kind of dumb to do stuff I don't enjoy, right? <laughs> so it's kind of redundant to say, I enjoy doing that. Well, I hope so. Why are you doing it? <laughs> anyway, I'll show them once those are all done. And hopefully they'll all sell in two hours too. <laughs> don't worry, Tamar. I got your name. Uh, well, you tell me which one I got your name on. 
because I know Tamara's been asking for these for quite a while. She's been, she's always so patient. She knows what I'm working on and she just, she just waits. <laughs> she waits. So yeah, if you're still here tomorrow, you can um, message me and let me know which one. Unless you want to wait and see what the insides look like. But they're pretty much going to be kind of sort of the same. Oh, okay. See, there's tomorrow. See, I told you. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> And if you want to wait, I totally understand that too, because I do kind of like like to see what's inside before I pick. Okay, anything else, ladies? Um. Oh, okay. I need your email so I can. Um, I think, well, I'll give it to you. I think I've got your info, but just in case, just in case. I think that's my email. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, yes. I do believe, I do believe. Thank you, Carla. Got it. Thank you very much. Anything else, ladies? I just think these journals are going to be so fun to make together, you guys. I like the old grungy stuff. Oh, and I saw, I got, I'll have to double check. I just ran across this new girl. I think she's new. Um, at least she's new to me. I don't remember her name right now. Um... But when we get together next time, I'll have her name. But she does the coolest stuff. She And she shows you how she does everything, but she does it really, really fast. you got to be one of those kind of people that, you know, are already kind of um, exposed and have some basic knowledge to techniques. And then you can kind of pick up on what she's talking about. If you're like a newbie, you're going to go, what? Especially because she, she speeds up her videos. Even though she's explaining them, she speeds them up and it's like, wait, 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 what did, what did you just do? <laughs> but she's got what I think, for me anyway, are really innovative ideas. You know, no offense to anybody because I do the same thing. But, you know, one person comes out with something that's kind of cool and it isn't even new. It's like 10 years old and it's revamped. And then everybody and their mother is doing videos on how to do the same darn thing. And it's real refreshing when you find somebody that's doing something that you've never seen, nobody else is doing, and she came up with the idea. And you know she did because you've never seen it anywhere else, or at least I've never seen it anywhere else. And I love people like that. And she doesn't have um, that many subscribers, and she's so cool. So she must be really, really new, and she just hasn't caught on. But I'll have all of her information uh, next week because she made these super duper cool. Um, she, they, she, she, well, let me backtrack. I'm blabbering here. First, before I do for anything else, save your soda cans or beer cans or whatever cans it is that you use, those flimsy aluminum cans. Save a few. Uh, because when I give you the link next week, um, she makes 
tabs. She makes, um, you know, those, um, what do you call those things that you, these things, these things. I'm brain dead, people. My brain is, she makes things that look like that. <laughs> you know what that is. <laughs> and um, just, just cool stuff. And then she antiques and she makes them look kind of old and grungy. And they would go perfect with this. Perfect with this. So um, so once you get your journal made and everything, and you want to put these little tabs and these little things and all these little doohickeys, follow her video, uh, her tutorial, and you'll make some super cool stuff. And she makes them out of the cans. Really neat. No, not a bit of Songbird. Nope, not her. Um. Just wait. If I lose you, it's all your fault. I'm going to go look right now <laughs> and see if I can find her. <laughs> um, let me check my history because I was just watching her the other day, but then I've seen so many other stupid move. Oh, never mind. Let me see. Um, because I can't remember her name right now. Oh, here she is. Here she is. I guess I haven't watched that many videos since I watched her copy. Yeah, it's good for you guys to, to watch her now, I think. Okay, let me see what happens. How come I can't... <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I hit something I, I knew I shouldn't have. Okay. Now, let me go back to her. So I, okay. So the name. See, she only has 218 subscribers. She should have like 21,000 subscribers. Um, it's um, Crates of Creativity. Of creativity. Maybe that's why. She does not have a catchy name. I'm sorry. <laughs> she's she's too cool um, to not have. Like this. She's only got 100 views of this. Um, everybody go over there and say, Rosemary sent me over. She doesn't have no idea who I am. But I think it would be kind of cool. She'd probably think like, wow, who's this Rosemary? <laughs> <laughs> Make me sound like I'm somebody, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I got it up there, Miss Popo. Oh, did you, Susan? You know, when you sent me that thing, I had, I mean, I saw what, what it was. I didn't know it was Nick that had done that um, that video. I had no idea. And then somebody contacted me and said, well, Nick did your eco printing and now she's doing your tape. And I'm going, what? So I go over there and I go, oh, <laughs> That's okay. Everyone will think just like the she invented the eco eco printing. She's invented the tape too. That's okay. That's all right. She can have all the glory. No problem. Oh, I gotta go read the comment. I guess I do need to go read them. <laughs> it's funny. You guys are funny. Yes, she's really cool. And yeah, she just, she's an artist. Let's put it that way. You know how some people, you know, a lot of us were like paper people or were this or were that. I would put her under the classification that she's like a real artist. It's just that she's, she's directing all that right now into her journal. She says she's new at that and she obviously not new at art. So I don't know what she did before or, you know, or what she does in addition 
to her journals, but she's definitely been an artist for a long time. And she's just, you know, um, doing that now. So, um, yeah, check her out. Give her some love. <laughs> and she has a Facebook page, she says. I think maybe the link is on there, too. And um, and she mentioned something about some kind of download. I think like some of the stuff she does, she'll, you know, draw out like a little pattern and she puts it over in the Facebook page in case you want to download the pattern and, you know, and print that out and do what she does. I mean, she's very generous. She, you know, she shows you how to do everything. She gives everything away. What, Susan, what happened? What do you mean it broke? I told you not to be hitting Betty with it. I told you, stop hitting Betty. It turned into a speedball plate. What did you do to it? I think you probably put too much of that. Um, whatever it was you start cleaning it with. Yeah. I think you're making it too clean. <laughs> you need to dirty up that puppy. Yeah, and you guys should make them. You know, I made one. Um, oh, paper stuck to it, but you know, that did it to my regular one too. I can't remember. I came to a conclusion why it did it. It hasn't done it since. I can't remember what I think I did. Um, I can't remember, but it happened. Yeah. It happened to my regular one too, but, um, I cleaned it up and it, and it stopped doing it. I forget, I forget what it was, but yeah, you guys should, um, you know, even if you buy them, if you want to like try stuff and you're afraid to use, you know, use your real one, I always would suggest having a homemade one as a backup to do all that kinds of stuff that you're afraid to mess up yours. And I know I've heard a lot of people saying it does this, it does that. Well, you know, there's an old recipe and there's what I call a newer recipe. Um, the newer recipe is like four or five years old, but people are still. Um, thinking about the old recipe where it would mold and you had to keep it in the refrigerator and, you know, all this stuff. And people are still saying the same old thing when that's, that's not, that's not true anymore. It's a different recipe. You don't put it in the refrigerator. Mine never went in the refrigerator. Mine never molded. You know, I used it for like three years and I just decided, Hey, I think, you know, I'll get me a, a uh, store bought one, you know, but um, they work just as good. It's just as good. Yeah, no refrigeration at all. Make a big giant one. <laughs> Mine took around three years to start um, shrinking, but then I just threw it in the microwave and made a small one out of it. What do you cover it with, Aaron? I covered mine with, um, I can't remember what it was, but it was something that would cling to it and it kind of messed it, it, it messed it up. It didn't, it wasn't, you know, flat anymore. It had those little divots to it. So I stopped covering it. Oh, Tupperware. Oh, wait, wait.
Oh, okay. I'll have to try that. Yeah. I didn't know that because I did that before I had bought a real one. So I didn't know all that stuff. Uh oh. Well, Susan, it sounds like you need to do a Johnny with Amazon. <laughs> See, Stephanie knows what's going on. She's she's a good one to stay in our chat. She she knows what's going on. All right, you guys. Anything else? <laughs> or you just want to chit chat with yourselves? <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know why you why hers marked mine. You saw mine didn't mark at all. Yeah, the grunge is good, except when you're trying to do um, image transfers, it has to be clean. So I think what you should do, uh, just a suggestion, one side, keep it clean for your transfers. And then the other side, leave it grungy, you know, for just your regular jelly plating. I think that would work. Glycerin suppositories. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is Johnny still on? Maybe we should all go see if, well, I'm not going to spend that thing. But um, is she still on? Yeah, she's still on. Okay. Well, it's almost nine o'clock. I don't know when she's getting off. It's past her bedtime. I thought she'd be in bed by now. <laughs> so let's go back um, and see what she's up to. And then if not before... Um, I will see you guys here next Wednesday, 7 Central, and we are going to work on our journals, and I hope you guys uh, were inspired to grunge up your papers. Um, you can make them darker, you can make them lighter, and then come on over on Wednesday. Even if you didn't buy the kit, go grunge up your own papers, and um, and we'll do some playing together. Um, next um, Wednesday at 7. All righty, let's go crash the party, guys. Thanks again for all your support. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.